well, hello. <laughs> I don't know if any of you watching it live have spotted the fatal error. <laughs> I'm half an hour early. It's a scheduled one, as you may well know, and it's supposed to be in half an hour's time. And I thought, oh, I'll just come on early. And I've put some new stuff in, new intros and whatever else. And I put them in for my first live back of the year. And I thought, oh, I'll just come in early and shuffle them around because I've just thrown them at the bottom of the order, like what I show you. And I thought, oh, I'll come in early and I'll sit and I'll just move them all around and put the same sort of things together again so I know where they are because my first live back, I couldn't quite find where which one I wanted. And I just happened to see the countdown and it said four minutes before live. So, no, what have I done? Now, some time ago on my other channel, for me, my other channel's live is at two o'clock in the afternoon. And for some reason, I got confused. And one day I went on at 2.30 and my live had been running for half an hour. So I was half an hour late. And I did go back and in the um, description afterwards, I did say, uh, fast forward half an hour because I'm not there till then uh, so I think I've done the reverse now for me now it's five o'clock in the early evening and it's supposed to be starting at 5 30 so I think I'm getting mixed up with hours and half hours at the moment so thank you if you're uh, watching this back later go what are you on about I'm just watching it back yes yeah, so I'm going backwards and forwards with my time so Mike said how huh? Can you suddenly get something like that wrong when you do it all the time? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, yes, this, this is technically <laughs> half an hour early. But if you watch it back later, it won't make any difference to you. But as I say, so lucky. I thought um, I'd just um, put everything in the right order that I show my little intros and all that because I've switched them up. As you know, we got new quote corners again. Every now and then I change them up. And so I wanted to put those in the place where I knew where they would be. And I thought, oh, nice and calm. I'd just done the quote corners, moved them to where I wanted and a couple of other bits. And as I say, I just glanced up. And it, the countdown was on. It was four minutes. I was like, ah! <laughs> so um, luckily, I had already prepped the things I'm going to show you. So it wasn't a case of that. That would have been more stressful. But I tend to do that earlier anyway. So I haven't got to think about what I'm doing. Anyway, so I think everything's in the right order. Now I'm going to suddenly find something that's completely in the wrong place. <laughs> I think it is. So let's start today with Quote Corner. I've got to think what day it even is now. What day is it, guys? It must be, is it Monday? It's Monday. <laughs> oh, dear. Monday. So new Quote Corner for Monday. Why well, get my head together? <laughs> And yes, pictures, footage is from my garden. I thought I'd do it a bit different this time. So this time, instead of my animation that I use, I thought maybe a little bit of home footage. Let me know in the comments if you prefer the old way. I did my quote corners, the animation, or if you like this, or if you'd like a mix. So some months I'll do, it's not every month I change, it's just now and then. Um, do you want? real footage in the background do you like the animation better or would you like the mix i'm thinking possibly the mix if some say one some say the other of course it would be a mix depends really what i've got i'm not going to go out and make footage if there's something sitting there little interlude bit then i just thought i'd use those okie dokie let's do now let's go straight on to the first section of today which is the So we're talking 
talking gardening now this is again i've showed it many times it's a whole group of little thin booklets that mike got from his mum and at the beginning of these they tell you what to do what week of each month in your garden so i thought i would share this with you these are from the 1970s and the only bits i jump are anything obviously 70s were quite high on using chemicals in the garden which i don't do so i try not to read those bits for you um let's see what to do let's start with the fruit garden what to do in the fruit garden and this will be for the third week of january because i thought we're already starting into this week i would jump to the third week of january <clears throat> so in the fruit garden and it says as spring draws nearer some attention can be given to making cordon apples and pears perform more as you would wish and not as they would this might sound like shades of 1984 but within certain limits the behavior of trained forms of fruit can be manipulated although it does require time and patience Existing called on apples and pears that have reached the top supporting wire and are trained as single called ons, have one main stem only, can be lowered. Care must be taken to ensure that there are no bends in the middle or near to the top, or future growth will be uneven. The effect of lowering the tree along its full length is twofold. The lower buds get more of their share of the sap as it rises which ensures more even growth and increase fruitfulness and secondly it is not then necessary to prune the leading shoot so severely and thus discourage unduly strong growth at the tips oblique cordons those that are planted at an angle of 45 degrees to the ground should be carefully and securely tied in so they receive the full benefit of the training wires and bamboo poles. Now that they are leafless, you should be able to see at once any ties which have been loosened or have come away completely from the trees and retie the young cordons as necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. Older cordons will need crowded spurs cut out. So set aside an afternoon for this chore. <clears throat> in the greenhouse although it's tempting at this time of year to keep the greenhouse clamp firmly shut without any ventilation it is a dangerous practice always keep a vent or pane of glass slightly open unless the weather is actually bitterly cold sometimes in winter you get the odd spell of mild sunny weather as soon as this happens, take the opportunity to open up the vents a good deal more to allow plenty of fresh air to circulate around the seedlings and young plants. In winter, when the quantity and quality of light is poor, too much warmth will cause lush, weak growth, which is likely to collapse completely at the first hint of disease. It does not matter if opening the ventilator lowers the temperature and the plants temporarily stop growing as a result. As long as they do not get frosted, they will resume growing when the temperature warms up without any ill effects. If you have not yet bought in your potted up strawberry plants for full sin, do so now. If you leave it much longer, they will be no earlier than those grown under cloches. Those already bought in should be showing signs of life by now and may need watering. Established peach trees grown in greenhouses, greenhouse borders can be top dressed now. To do this, carefully scrape away the top two or three centimetres, an inch or so, of border soil and replace it with a fresh mixture of loam, bone meal and sulphate of potash. A fairly heavy watering can be given as the new season's growth will be starting any time now and the border soil may be quite dry. Give the glass a thorough cleaning at the time 
so the maximum amount of sunlight can reach the dormant tree. Indoor grapes can have their rods untied from supporting wires and lowered more towards a horizontal position, making sure that the rods are not damaged in the process. Lowering the rod encourages the dormant buds to start developing, giving an early start to the cropping season. Over exuberant lowering, on the other hand, will snap the rod or, more likely, serious damage to the roots. Once the rods are covered with new young growths, they can be returned to their former position and then tied in. So that's what to do with your grapes for now. Stephen Tina say morning. Yes, I apologise to you, Stephen Tina. I don't know why I'm half an hour early. I randomly came on to just sort some bits out that I was taking away some Christmas stuff and adding some other little excerpts. And I suddenly noticed it said four minutes to go. <laughs> So I just came on. So, uh, yeah, apologies. <laughs> so basically, third week of January in your garden, the vegetables you should be able to harvest now are Brussels sprouts, cabbage, including savoys, heading broccoli, winter cauliflower, sprouting broccoli, celery, kale, Jerusalem artichoke, leek, parsnip, winter radish, salsify, winter spinach, spinach beet, Swiss chard, um, turnip, hardy varieties and swede. Stephen Tina just got up. Yeah, lucky you're not in Cyprus because it's quarter past five in the evening. <laughs> For fruit in the third week of January, you should be planting apples, pears, Quince, I'm about to harvest my quince, figs, grapes, mulberry, nuts, stone, bush and cane fruits. You should be pruning apples, pears and fig. You should also check for birds and mice, check for birds and mice on the top and soft fruits. And in your greenhouse now, you should be able to sow French beans, mustard and cress, carrots, radish, lettuce, potatoes, starch it in early varieties. You should be transplanting tomato plants, done that, um, into heated greenhouse, not done that. Cucumber plants, done that, into heated greenhouse, not done that. <laughs> Starting to growth, grapes and peaches. And you should be able to harvest lettuce, radish, mustard and cress, French beans, carrot, American cress, parsley, chives, chicory, rhubarb and sea kale forced. So that's a little bit looking into what you should be doing next week in January. And this is the climate of England in the book. So obviously you can vary from there. To Doves, Bees and Gardens, hello to you. How are you doing? I'm guessing it's Sarah, but who knows? I guess with Steve and Tina, who's answering questions? <laughs> and Steve and Tina, Jewel are saying Happy New Year to Two Doves as well. So I will do my welcome to both of you. So first for Steve and Tina, Jewel, do go and check out their channel and this is for two doves bees and gardens do go and check out their channel too So two really good channels there, very great community as well. And I thank both your channels immensely for being there for me. So let's go on to the next subject, the next topic or theme of today. So a recipe today. Stephen T say thank you. No, thank you for being here. 
So a recipe today. Oh, Sarah says, thanks, Dawn. Oh, sorry, it's John. Thanks, Dawn. It's actually John. Sarah's next door getting ready to start the day. Oh, well, thanks, John. It's always good to know if you're a couple's channel who's actually on. So, oh, thanks. Thanks for being here, John. Thank you. Yeah, so a recipe today. Now, do bear in mind, different countries, let alone different people, make recipes different ways this is from my cypriot recipe book so let me know in the comments if you do this differently in any way and if so how that differs and the reason this is to do or new to you do you make ravioli because that's what the recipe is going to be and to do if you do do it well go and make some more as well so ravioli's recipe it's very short so i thought i would do this as a chat in a live rather than as a video and also you can always play this back if you don't get the ingredients for example and it says the pastry for these is made out of water and flour only take about four cups of flour and gradually add enough water to make a smooth, stiff dough. Knead well and let rest for a few hours. If you put the pastry into the refrigerator, then wrap it first in greased paper. The filling is made from the following ingredients. One grated halloumi cheese, the best cheese of Cyprus. Two eggs or enough to make the cheese into a creamy consistency, a handful of dried, finely rubbed mint, or fresh, finely chopped mint. Beat the eggs, then mix in the cheese and the mint. You also need about three quarters of a packet of butter melted, and grated cheese or more grated halloumi. If you can't get halloumi, then of course any cheese that you prefer. And this is to dress the cooked ravioli before serving. Heat your water when you begin to make the raviolis, remembering to add the stock cube and cook a few at a time for 15 to 20 minutes. Now to make the raviolis. <clears throat> Roll out parts of your pastry very thinly, as thin as a leaf. Put a teaspoonful of the filling at three inch intervals along one side of your leaf. Then fold the pastry over the little heaps and press down the dough around them. Take a glass and cut out crescent shaped raviolis. When you have made about 10, Put them to cook in the simmering water. Straighten the edge of the pastry and continue until you have used it all up. In the meantime, watch the cooking raviolis. When they are tender, put them into a heated serving dish and pour a little of the melted butter over them and then sprinkle with grated cheese. Serve hot. They are very good also when reheated over a pot of boiling water. So I hope you enjoyed that recipe. Do any of you make your own pasta or anything like that? Let me know. Okie dokie. Let's move on to our next section of the day. Just grabbing to see what it is. Oh, there's that word again. I've noticed I say grabbing a lot. <laughs> I catch myself doing it now. So let's go on to the next theme. So I have briefly shown this book before, and it's Mike's book. It's the RSPB, Royal Society for Protection of Birds, and it's a bird feeder handbook by Richard, um, no, by Robert Burton, and the complete guide to attracting and observing birds in your garden, the feathered variety, of course. And I thought what it might be fun to do is go through a bird every now and then out of the book so we can learn about some different birds 
And I think the easiest way to do this would be to start with the first bird. And I don't know if any of you will spot these in your garden. <laughs> Maybe you will. Who knows? Oh, the grey heron. So we've got the grey heron first. Ooh, that's a good picture at the bottom, look, with a fish. So we're going to learn a little bit about grey herons today. I won't read all of it. I'll just pick some bits out. You can recognise it by its dagger-like bill. It's black plume. It's a very large bird with long legs and neck and a white underneath. Also has grey plumage above. The heron is a bird that rarely comes into your garden. So if you do see it, that's great. Uh, but steals fish or frogs from ponds when it does. I think they're quite well known for that, are they not? Um, once a heron has found the source of an easy meal, it's likely to return until it's cleaned out the pond. Yes, yeah, so if you've got a big pond or lake, you will probably see them. Unless you make a special point of keeping watch when it sneaks in at dawn or dusk, you will spot one only if it is disturbed as it rises steeply to make a hurried escape. Feeding. The heron mainly eats fish, amphibians and large insects, but also small mammals and other birds. For the bird table, leave out assorted meat scraps and these are sometimes taken in hard weather. The voice. The most common call you are likely to hear is a harsh Frank. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Nesting. The heron nests in tall trees, rarely on buildings, usually alongside several other nests in a heronry, which may be hundreds of years old. That's interesting. The nest, which consists of a large platform of twigs, is built by both sexes and lined with grass. The heronry is often used as a communal winter roost. Breeding starts early in the year, with most of the eggs being laid by early April. Nesting information, February to July, one brood, four or five pale blue eggs, 25 to 26 days incubation, both sexes, 50 days fledgling and two to three weeks until independent. So that's quite interesting. So maybe we will do some more from that book and go through that as soon as we finished our fables. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Tina talking to uh, John and Stephen Tina said, oh, they used to, but not anymore. And uh, John saying, hey, Steve, the men are holding down the fort here this morning. They <laughs> certainly are. Laugh out loud, yes. Steve and Tina, no grey herons. Oh, we have glitter bomb in the house, surely. I came on yours, I left you a message. I actually had the message in the chat, but you were just signing off as I posted in the chat and said hello. So I missed you by seconds. So uh, that was, Dave, was that Friday? I think it was Friday. I think it was Friday. I might be wrong there. Who knows? But yes, guys, go and check out Glitter World. Ah, oh, talking of the pasta, because I did a recipe of ravioli a few seconds ago, and John saying occasionally we make our own. Time is a valuable commodity, so we don't make our own pasta too often. I think I've made it once many moons ago, just so I've made it, but I agree with you. Um, I can't eat it now anyway, but um, it's obviously easier. I might just weighs out a certain amount and that's it. Everyone saying hello to Shirley. Shirley saying hello to everyone. Okay, let's go on to the next bit for today. The next theme. I'm on the wrong page to do the intro. <laughs> it's 
So let's do a bit of this. So I've got some random tips today. I normally theme them. I guess they're kind of themed, but they're odds, odds and ends. So I have four for you today. The first one is, before wearing a new garment with buttons, put a little clear nail varnish on the threads of each button, and that helps them stay on. Yes. A dancer is never without clear nail varnish. It could be used for so many things in the dance profession. Did you know that? <laughs> uh, Shirley saying she made fresh pasta twice weekly at one of the fine dining spots I was at. Wow, lovely. Lovely. I think it does taste a bit different for sure. Definitely. Okay, my next tip. Keep a pair of cut off shirt sleeves in the car. If you have to lift the bonnet and tinker with an engine, you can slip these over your arms and keep your clothes clean. That's quite a good tip. Tip number three. Keep a plain candle handy for inked addresses on parcels and plant labels in the garden. Simply rub it over the writing and it will stop ink smearing or cover with strips of sellotape. Now that's a great one because a lot of us on uh, my channel, my viewers are gardeners and that's always a tip. What's the easiest way to label plants in the garden that will last? And there's a few ideas out there. But this year I'm doing the, I haven't actually ever done it before, the lollipop thing, the popsicle stick. I've never actually done that before. And if you see my videos, uh, I think I posted one today with how I label them because they're growing indoors and they have covers on. So I just write on the stick and lay it upside down on the shelf. And then when they transplant, I can do that. But yes, to rub a candle over that that should stop um it running that's quite good that's actually a good oh i gave myself a tip then <laughs> okay the next one last one is to stop a shoulder bag slipping down your arm sew a small button under your collar and the strap will stay behind it now that's quite good because when i go on my walks I have, it's like a shoulder bag, but it's not. It's a bottle cooler, you know, a water bottle cooler, but it's got a long strap on it. Well, I'm walking, it always slips down and it's too short to wear across that way, really. So that's quite a good um, tip there for sure. Jolly good, jolly good tips today. As I say, they were a bit random today. Okay, let's go on to... This. Now this month I'm promoting on both my channels a playlist that is on both my channels and this is my recipes. A lot of people don't know I do recipes because I don't put them out very often. If I show you a recipe, they are quick, they are easy, they are very low cost, and they mostly are things I've grown in the garden. There might be a few odd things like pasta or something to go with them, but they are very frugal recipes. So both my channels have different recipe playlists, so check them out.
So, yes, do go and check out those if you're into recipes, as I say, cheap, easy and very basic ingredients. None of this weird stuff that you really don't have in your cupboard. So do check them out. As I say, they're different recipes on both channels. So have a look at both of those. I'm pretty sure the playlist is just called recipes. <laughs> Sometimes I can't think of the name of playlist. But I'm pretty sure it's just recipes. <laughs> And don't forget, if you do see a recipe you think is particularly good or someone you know will like, then don't forget to share them out or share the whole playlist. That would be really cool. Okie doke. So on to my last section for today. Um, <laughs> um, ah, this. <laughs> So we're playing this again, Outburst, Outburst, and this is where I get a card and it's got a subject on the top. You can't really read the answers here. You see the subject on the top. I tell you the subject and we have to, between us, try and get all the 10 answers that are listed. And it's under time limit. And then to read it, I have to put it in this thing and then you can read it behind the red, supposedly. <laughs> it's very hard to read it. <clears throat> but anyway, if you're watching this back later, shout out your answers at the screen and see how many you get and see if you can say things before I say it or it appears in the chat from those watching. The first question or uh, category is things you put lemon in or on. Things you put lemon in or on. So if you're watching this live, you can type in as many answers as you can think of. Try and get all 10. I think there's 10. And see if you get ones that I get. Beer. Steve and Tina say beer. We're on the timer. Lemon. What about hot water like a toddy? Fish. 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 Steve and Tina say fish. What about like to make lemon curd as in like a jam, lemon curd? Uh, John says, torts, desserts. Yeah, <laughs> Steve's going, yeah. Uh, lemon in or on? Pancakes, 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 tea. Steve's saying tea. Uh, lemon. Oh, what's about cold water, like squash or cordial? Mm -hmm. Or lemonade, to make lemonade. John says, I put it on my cello, lemon cello. <laughs> Excellent one, John. Steve said lemonade. Uh, lemon, there's lemon balm, isn't there? Is there lemon balm? I should put lemon on. Lemon on or in. You know, there's going to be some obvious things we're not getting. Lemon pie. There's lemon pie, isn't there? Isn't there lemon pie? Oh, lemon tart, lemon curd, lemon tart, lemon pie. Uh, lemon. <laughs> you put lemon in the fruit bowl. <laughs> lemon in the fruit bowl. Cakes. Cakes in general. About icing. Have lemon icing. John says, we make lemon basil tea from the garden. It includes lemon as well. Lovely. That sounds nice. Ooh, I really want to like these teas, but I don't. I don't drink tea. I know they're not the same taste, but I don't know. I want to like them, <laughs> but I don't like any. 
It sounds nice. Oh, lemon basil tea. Doesn't that sound lovely? If you want to know how to make that, go on to Dove Spees and Gardens and ask in their chat and uh, they uh, let you know. Okay, time's up. Let's see. I think that was a good question, that one. <clears throat> so the first answer, which I can't read. Uh, iced tea. Excuse my big face. <laughs> iced tea. Uh, no, that doesn't help. Your hair. Your hair. Oh, that's better. I can see it best there. Lemon meringue pie. Prawn cocktail. Oh, I do like me a prawn cocktail. Uh, what's that say? Stains. Put it on stains. What's that one say? Pancakes. I've got pancakes. Hot tea. John was just talking about tea. Fish. Uh, someone said fish. Who said fish? Let me look. Someone said fish at the beginning. Steve. Steve said fish. Gin. I don't drink gin. But yes. And the last one says water. I said like a cordial, didn't I? Like a cordial. Yay. And we see Blue's in the house. Welcome to Blue. Don't forget to go over and check out Blue's Self Reliance. <laughs> That was very good. That gave me time to put that card away and get another card out. So thanks for that, Blue. Oh, I've just like popped myself off the screen. There I am. Hello, me. Um, oh, guacamole. Steve, Steve was saying guacamole. Uh, avocado, said Steve. There we go. Okay, next question is if Blue were playing the um, outburst game, you know, the one where you have to type out your answers. <clears throat> so this one, Blue says, thanks, hon. I'm here on my phone overseeing a bubbling cauldron. Bless you, Blue, <laughs> a bubbling cauldron. <laughs> oh, Tina's here as well now. Oh, thanks for the heads up on that, Steve. Nice to see you, Tina. Hello, Tina. Guys, go and check out Tina's channel. <laughs> Steve and Tina Jewel. Go and check out Tina's channel. <laughs> There you go, Tina. That's for you. Okay, so now we have nursery rhyme characters. Well, that sounds fun. Nursery rhyme characters. So get typing if you can. I know blues are bubbling and brewing. <laughs> but um, you can shout out, Blue, just shout out randomly. We can't hear you, but see if you've said something before we do. Uh, uh, yay, says Blue. Yay. Uh, nursery rhyme characters, nursery rhyme characters. So type what you can think of. If you, as I say, if you watch this back later, you can still play. See how many you get. Oh, Blue is typing. Wee Willy Winky. <laughs> yes, first one on Blue's mind. Humpty Dumpty says Stephen Tina. That used to be my favourite nursery rhyme when I was tiny. I don't know. I think I. Uh, gelled with the fact he was big and round like me <laughs> yeah if you oh i don't know what video it's on but i show you my humpty dumpty i've got it's a yellow money box it's when i've done a sort out video might be on my other channel where i've done a declutter recently ish check that out because you see my humpty dumpty money box uh pied piper says steve and tina Three Little Pigs, says John. Jack and Jill, says Blue Self-Reliant. Ooh. What's about the old woman who lived in a shoe? I hope it was a fresh shoe. <laughs> I swear it was actually more of a boot than a shoe. Mm. <laughs> You've seen pictures, yeah. <laughs> Mary Quite Contrary. How does your garden grow? <laughs> Very quite contrary. Ow and the Pussycat, says Steve and Tina. 
Uh, Mary had a little lamb, says Dawn, because Dawn hasn't done much input. Dawn's been babbling. Uh, oh, there must be tons, mustn't there? It's bigger this year. I bet it is blue. Have to come on over. Uh, Tom, Tom Thumb? No. Who's uh, put his thumb in the pie? Tom, Little Jack Corner. That's what I'm thinking of. Little Jack Corner. Mary had a little lamb, says Stephen Tina. Mary got around the nursery rhyme, says Flo. She certainly did. <laughs> Peter Rabbit says uh, John. Little Red Riding Hood says Stephen Tina. Tom Tom the Piper's son says Blue. What about Bar Bar Black Sheep says Dawn. Itsy Witsy, it's 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 a spider. Incy Wincy Spider, Stephen Tina. <laughs> um what about Patter Cake, Patter Cake Baker's Man. Or rubber dub dub, three men in a tub. I wonder if that's where I get my like for rhyming poetry from. Yes, I've got a section now. I'm doing poetry on just fun little rhymy things that come out my head. I think that's is that my Friday ones. I'm doing the poetry corner. I think that, or is it Wednesday? Who knows? <laughs> Don't even know what time to start my lives anymore. Rubber dub dub, itsy itsy spider. Um, what's he by baby bunting? By baby bunting. Oh, that's a good one. Blow the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. That's a good one. Hickory dickory dock says Dawn. There must be loads, mustn't there? Hickory dickory dock. I would say the time has run out, but I don't remember even turning it over. <laughs> uh, do a few more thoughts, seeing as we're on a roll. Pop goes the weasel, says Stephen Tina. Three blind mice, oh yeah, that's a good one, blue. What's that, Tinker Taylor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief? Is that counted as nursery rhyme? I guess it is. Um, it's another girl. Mary quite contrary. Mary had a lamb. Oh, Lucy Lockett lost her pocket or something. Oh, what about the pigs where you count your toes? This little piggy went to market. Blue's telling me a story here. She's telling me about there was an old woman who swallowed a fly. <laughs> Someone you know, Blue? <laughs> no, I know that's a rhyme. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'd die. Yeah, little Miss Muffet, yes. Oh, McDonald. Would it be good if you got um, monetization for each comment? <laughs> oh, by the way, my monetization, in case you're interested, is now two euros a month. Because <laughs> I didn't do anything over Christmas. So I now get two euros a month and I have to get 80 euros to get paid. So, um... <laughs> I see you in a, what four years would that be? Four years, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, bless you. <laughs> Lucky I'm not here for that. I mean, it's nice, but yeah, yeah. I've only had two two payouts in the whole time I've done it, and once was because I was uh, shouting about equality, <laughs> so I got some money. <laughs> Yeah, that was when they wouldn't monetize Cyprus, so I uh, like made threats of all sorts of uh, discrimination policies and all sorts, and then suddenly a big bulk of money came in, and I thought, oh, that's a one-off payment. But no, Cyprus is monetized now, thanks to Dawn. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I got one more payout quite some time ago, so yeah, I'm on two euros a month now. Yay! <laughs> What shall I buy with that? <laughs> but that's the thing, you don't actually get it. It has to be. Um, and that includes, that payment, by the way, for this month, that included the um, super chat that Mr. Jimmy from this 
cute tourist sent me. That's how did in. So goodness knows what it really is a month. <laughs> Less than that. Take that off. Um, right, shall we look at the answers then? Nursery rhyme characters. See how many we've got of the ten. I must try and figure a way out that I can read this better. Uh, first one is Jack and Jill. We had that. Second one, Three Blind Mice. Blue had that. Little Jack Corner, we've got that. What's this say? Wee Willy Winky, that was Blue's first one. Uh, Little Bo Peep, we had that, I think. Old MacDonald, oh no, sorry, not Old MacDonald. Old Mother Hubbard, I don't think we got that one, did we? Old Mother Hubbard. Old King Cole, we didn't get that one. Uh, what's this say? Old Woman in a Shoe. Yes, debatable if it was a shoe or a boot. Mother Goose, yeah. You can keep your mother goose. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, blue. <laughs> Yay, blue. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, let's see. Ooh. You fill in the next bit. Now, it doesn't have to be one word. It can be more than one word. But the word is hand something. Hand something. As I say, it could be more than one word after that. Hand something. Hand. Hand. What can we come up with? Hand. Hands, knees, and boops a daisy. Hands, knees, and boops a daisy. Some, very good. Hands, some, very good, Stephen Tina. Oh, card junkie. Oh, nice to see you. Teddy's in the house. Guys, do go over and check out Teddy's channel, Old Car Junkie. He does great art and he's got some cars in there as well. And there's some horses now and then, so go and check out Old Car Junkies' channel. <laughs> and playing straight away there, Teddy. That's what we like. Hand in hand, says Teddy. Let's go back what I've missed. Uh, Stephen T said hand song. That's very good. Blue hand stand. Can you demonstrate blue? <laughs> the only way blue would demonstrate it is to physically sit on a chair, put her hands down and put her feet on. Can you do that, blue? Handmade, says Stephen Tina. Handshake, says John. Handshake, says blue. Hand out, says Stephen Tina. Hand in hand, said Teddy. Hand out. Hand written, says Stephen Tina. Hands with an S on, says Stephen Tina. Hands up, says T Stephen Tina. Hi, old car junkie. That's Teddy. Hi, Teddy from Stephen Tina Jewel. Don't forget, guys, if you don't know each other's channels, do pop over and say hello. The comments just really nice to get. Just someone saying, oh, hello. I get that sometimes. I'm on someone's chat and then the next time... I go in my chat and have a look. There's someone from there who's just come and said hello. And it's, oh, it's just really nice. Hand in, hand me, hand to mouth, handy man, hand up. What about handcuffs? Ooh, handcuffs, hand cream, hand span, ooh, hand print. Hand print, handmaiden, ooh, <laughs> handmaiden, handkerchief, <laughs> is that okay? Handkerchief, <laughs> hand towel, hand towel, uh, handsome, says Teddy. And handmade. Oh, we had handmade. Did we have handmade? Handmade. 
Hands on, says Stephen Tina. Hand, handgun, handgun, is that something? Handgun, I think so. Handbag, handbag, ha, ah, it's a good one, Dawn. Ah. Handbrake, oh, that's a good one, John. Hand sewn, says blue, that's good. I showed my embroidery on my last Wednesday live, so I'll show it again on Wednesday, how my embroidery is getting on. Hand sanitizer. Oh, that's very up to date, John. How's that all going for you guys? We've had a lot of tourism over Christmas and uh, they've brought back mask in. We still had it in hospitals and doctors anyway. It's just a health thing here anyway. But... Um, they're talking about um, you can't go and visit and things like that now. Um, hand cream. Shall we look at the answers? Or shall we try and look at the answers? <laughs> if I had a light here. Did I try that? If I put it up by the light ring, it doesn't really help. Okay, number one, handshake. We had that. Number two, hand book. Oh, just got a good one there from Teddy. Hand to hand combat. Wow, that's a great one. Hand book, hand cuff. I had that one. Hand grenade. Ooh. <laughs> hand grenade. Handkerchief. Oh, that is a thing. I thought it was handkerchief. I wasn't sure. Oh, I got that. Handmade. Who? Someone did handmade. Who did handmade? Hand me down. Ooh. Handwriting. None of us got that one. Handwriting. Hand out. We had that one. And hand picked. They were good ones. Blue said, Oh, uh, John said, How about glad hand? And Blue says, Yes, still sick from when I got the lurgy in the last week of November. Oh, Blue, is it one of those hanging on things? They're awful, really, aren't they? You just can't get over something. Oh, Blue. Take it easy, Blue. I have to come visit and see what you're doing. I have to come visit. I haven't visited, well, I don't think, barely anyone yet this year. I haven't visited any of you. <laughs> I think I replied to a couple of comments and, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is another good one. We're picking some good ones today. I have to look because some of them are... Um, like countries, like newspapers in certain countries and things like that. So we can't really all play. This one is same thing, hair something. Now you can have more than one word. So it can be hair something, 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 something. Hair caught in the car door and the driver's driving away. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, Blue says it almost goes, then wallet, bed again. Oh. Stephen Tina saying hairdo. Very good. Hairdo. Hairdo. Hairband. Haircut, says Stephen Tina. Hair plug, says Teddy. Hairy, says Stephen Tina. Hair dryer, says Stephen Tina. It's funny, when you guys comment, sometimes one comes and then another one pops up before it. So I apologise if I never read, if I miss one of your comments. It's like when Teddy came in, I was reading two comments under Teddy and then Teddy's icon popped up. Two back. <laughs> That's weird. I think it's maybe when you guys post, but maybe your internet system slower so uh, it puts it when you did post it even though it didn't quite get here maybe um where are we Stephen tina says hair loss Stephen tina say hair curler hair line hair less what's those hair bear bears or whatever it is there's a cartoon wasn't there the hair bear hair bear bunch hair bear bears Something like that. What about hairdresser? Hairdresser. Mm -hmm. 
hair salon, hair style, mm, hairy bikers. Do you know the hairy bikers? Hairy bikers. <laughs> uh, hair brush. Hair of my head, says Teddy. Hairless was Stephen Tina. Hair style, Stephen Tina. Bad hair day. I don't think you can put a word in front of hair. Uh, hair clips. Hair clips. Hair products, hair products, hair follicles, says Steve and Tina. See, now the one's popped up before that, but you definitely posted that first. Hair follicles, hair ties, hair braids. Uh, hair. Hair cut, says old car junkie. Hair dye, says Steve and Tina. Hair jokes, says Stephen Tina. Uh, John's in with hair salon, hair dye, hair dye, hair hair clippers. Ah, oh, <laughs> same time I said that popped up with Stephen Tina. Hair dye, uh, hair needs. Hair in my ear, says <laughs> old car junkie. Yeah, hair up your nose, those things. Hair dryer, says John. Shall we take a look? Hair appointment, that's a good one, Steve and Tina. Okie doke, reading. Uh, okay, first one we didn't get. Oh, hair extensions, that's a good one. Hair curler, hair appointment. Hair remover, that's a good one, Blue. Okay, the first one is hair net. None of us got that. Hair brush, we got. Hair spray. I don't think any of us said hair spray. We said hair products. Hair of the dog, said Steve. That's a good one. Uh, hair cut, we got. What's that say? Hair. Hair do. Yes, you got that at the beginning. Hair dryer uh hairless hair piece we didn't get that one hair piece uh, hair line you got that and hairdresser got that one so we did pretty well there we did pretty well what's the time let's do another one let's do another one i'm sure some of you guys are off in a minute uh oh easy one Fruit juices, fruit juices, ooh, fruit juices. Let's turn the timer up. <laughs> fruit juices. I likes me a mango, a mango, mango juice or mango and exotic fruits I like. Uh, Blue's still waiting for the pot to boil. Are you watching it, Blue? You know what they say, a watch pot never boils. <laughs> and the second you walk away, it will. <laughs> Steve and Tina say tomato juice, orange juice. Blue's in with pineapple juice. I've done mango. Steve and Tina, apple juice. Mm, peach juice for me peach juice oh Steve and Tina peach juice we often do that at the same time Blue's not watching it on purpose you'll just hear that fizz when it goes over uh, other juice blueberry juice strawberry juice they're both from Steve and Tina um Fruit juice. You can have lemon juice. Raspberry juice, Steve and Tina. Blue used to love pineapple and coconut juice. Oh, yes. <laughs> Malibu. <laughs> Malibu. Do you know, I bought loads of alcohol and I've had some of it. And I'm like, I really want it. My kids going, why do you keep having it? And then you're so ill. 
<laughs> I'll have to give the banana one away. Um, but I've I've got a bottle of Malibu, Malibu not open yet, and a carton of pea, uh, pineapple. Maybe I'll see how I go with that one. Cranberry juice, says Stephen Tina. Cranberry juice, that's a good one. Uh, apple. Did we have apple? Did someone say apple juice? Let me look. Yes, Stephen Tina did apple. Um, what else? Uh, fruit juice. You know, there's going to be something we haven't got. What about pomegranate? Pomegranate juice. Passion fruit juice. Apricot juice says blue. Got it. Good one. Um, have you said strawberry? Yes, Stephen Tina did strawberry. Uh, what about black currant? Black currant juice. Sugar cane says Stephen Tina. Um, um, shall we have a look? Let's have a look. And the answers are orange, apple, pineapple, peach, apricot. We're doing good. What's that one say? It's like pea. That can't be right. Pear, <laughs> pear, grape. I don't think we got grape, did we? Tomato, prune. We didn't get prune. And grapefruit. Oh, Blue's just coming with the grape. Excellent. Uh, so we did pretty well on that one. Should we do another? See what I can find for you. Oh, this is quite a fun one. Occupations that begin with D for Dawn. <laughs> D for dawn. Did you notice when I was reading something out earlier? Was it the gardening? And when I, I ever get to the word dawn, it was a thing at school. There was always dawn in a hymn or something. And whenever you got to that word, everyone would do it really loud, go dawn. <laughs> so now if I read anything and it's got dawn in it, I do it automatically. I think if you play this live back, I think it was still about the gardening. I think it was that. And I, I got the word dawn. I went dawn. <laughs> Have to play it back. <laughs> oh, we've got some occupations here. Stephen Tina, doctor. Stephen Tina, dentist. Blue, dustbin men. Stephen Tina, driver. Stephen Tina, digger. John, dog trainer. That's a good one. That's awesome. It's a clever one. What about diver? Diver. Digger? You yeah, have digger? Driving instructor. Ooh, that's a good one, Dawn. Ooh, dairy farmer, says Blow. That's really good. That's clever. Dairy farmer. Uh... Hmm. Let's think. Oh, Mike's just shouted from the kitchen. Demolition worker. Oh, oh, Blue's trumped you with data analyst. <laughs> Very good. Dentist. Stephen Tina got that one, John. Dentist. Dietitian says Mike. Blue saying dancer. Oh, I don't think of that. <laughs> huh? I don't know why not. Because <laughs> I have wine. That's why not. <laughs> uh, who? Oh, Mike saying dermatologist. Oh, John saying detective. That's a good one. Detective. Oh, doorman, says Stephen Tina. That's good. Oh, deckhand, says Blue. We're getting very good here. Very creative. Uh, 
what about is there like no it's not the real word for it i was going to say duplicator someone who uh no that's counterfeiter is what i'm thinking of Ooh, disc jockey says john that's a good one delivery driver surprised you didn't think of that one earlier blue <laughs> seeing as tony does deliveries <laughs> It's a long running joke between me and Blue. It's Tanny. Tanny is uh, Blue's uh, partner. What about Dad? With Dad, Dad's a job, isn't it? Ooh, Deputy Sheriff says Blue. That's cool. Very good. Oh, gosh. DBA, database analysis. That's where Blue was going. Blue was there. She's got data analysis. Oh, dear. Is that what Sarah does? Uh, Blue Sand Designer. That's good. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What else? What about a dealer in a um, casino? That's a good one. A dealer. <laughs> I think they're called dealers. Yeah, dealers. Dietitian, yes. Uh, some who? Decoder. Oh, decoder says Mike. Uh, ooh, Blue's got direct care manager. Do you imagine if someone just suddenly came into this uh, chat? <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> You have to say, can you find the link to all these things? It's not that they're jobs, it's something more specific. <laughs> uh, what about a double, as in acting, and you get your double, don't you? Your double comes and does uh, all your parts for you, like a stunt double, but not necessarily for stunts. Oh, director says blue. Dishwasher says blue. Um, what else? We're doing very well on this one. I'd be surprised if we don't get all that's on the list. Uh, deep sea diver. I said diver, but I'm going for deep sea diver now. Ooh, dictator. Dispatcher. Ooh, there's a good one. Do you want me to do the answers yet? We're doing quite well. We're all, we're all still going on this. Uh, what about, have we said designer? Someone said, yes, Blue said designer back there. It's probably what I put in my head. Dock worker. That's a good one, Blue. It's thinking out the box or out the ship. <laughs> Doorman. Yeah, I got that one. Doorman. Shall we have a look? Let's have a look. Let's see. I'll be surprised if we did get more, but I guarantee if we didn't get one, it's going to be something so simple. We'd be like, oh. Okay, we've got, I just can't read it, dancer, we've got that one, dentist we got, detective we got, disc jockey we got, dishwasher blue got, doctor we got, the beginning, dressmaker, what's that one, driving instructor, I've got that one, what's this one say, double glazing salesman, we didn't get that, I knew it'd be something simple, and diplomat. Someone said di uh, dictator, but yeah, diplomat. So I'll go with that. I would have let you have that. I know it's different bits, the same sort of thing. Very good. Okay, should we do one more? One more. Floor coverings. Floor coverings. So last one for the day. Floor coverings timer <laughs> though it does get ignored floor coverings floor coverings well it can be people They're like, eh. <laughs> tile says steve and tina tile carpet which you don't have in cyprus you don't have carpets nope no carpets uh would that be mats you were trying to do then i'm guessing parquet says blue yeah i'm guessing steve was typing mat because he does have some uh, battles with his uh 
what do you call it linoleum oh i do like me a bit of lino <laughs> i like an old-fashioned bit of lino that used to be great for tap dancing on used to be great oh mosaic that's good blue mosaic floor coverings feet <laughs> Bearskin skin rug. Oh, that's a good one, Stephen Tina. Yes, yeah, got mats, carpets, rugs, wood, stone. Oh, what's a great big old like slabs of stone? Um, you get slate, but what's a great big old in like old cottages and that? But they call them something. The great big oh what's it called really great big slabs of stone it's called something get quarry no not quarry flagstone that's it flagstone that's the things laminate that's a good one john laminate laminate hmm, floor coverings Dust sheet. Dust sheet, says Mike. That's brilliant. Oh, that's a good one. Dust sheet's good. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think outside the box now. Floor coverings. Vinyl, says Blue. I would say down to floor heating, but that's underneath, not on top. <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess we're not going to get all of these. That varnish, that's a good one, Steve. Varnish. Cobblestones. Ah, paint. Yeah, thinking out the box now, Stephen Tina. Paint. Very good. Floor coverings, cement, concrete. Oh, polished concrete. Yeah, I was just saying cement as well. So we're on that. Reeds, says Blue. Ooh, reeds. Sawdust in the old pubs. They put sawdust and the butchers. Is there any butchers that still have sawdust down? I used to like going in the uh, butchers. Straw, says Stephen Tina. Blue says straw. We're on the same boat now. Hmm. Shall we look, see? Mike says wood chip now. Right, let's look then. So, number one is carpet. Number two, lino. Three is tile. Four is wood. Five is parquet. Six is rugs. Seven is brick. No one got brick. Eight is stone. Nine is boards. Well, we'll go with wood. We've said wood. And ten is mud. Mud. Ah, oh, blue saying not allowed to have sawdust now, Mikey. <laughs> oh, not allowed to have sawdust. <laughs> oh dear. Well, that was great. I think we had some good questions in that one. Sometimes we have some weird ones, or they say something and we take it, or I take it the wrong way. So I think that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that round today. So we play games sometimes. It depends on time and how I'm doing and what else is going on. Obviously, the more of you in, the more fun the game is. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, thanks a lot for being here. Really enjoyed your company. Let's give you all a clap because there were some awesome answers there. <laughs>
<laughs> okay guys thank you so much for being here and you know i really truly mean it from my heart we have such a good time and i love the games because i don't get to play games so this is the best way i can play games blue was saying oh because i'm good at finding those at archaeology yeah i'll have to have a chat with you at some point see how that's going that'd be awesome that's all the secret okay guys thank you so much and i hope to come and visit you all soon sometime soon so until next time as always Meraki. Thank you.